Welcome to another edition of Our City. As we close out the month of March, I hope all of you are prepared for a nice spring as we head into the month of April. And tonight's show on Thursday, March 30th, a few things going around the city of Elizabeth at 1030 in the morning. I'm going to join J.A. BizTown, which is Junior Achievement BizTown, and they're located at 360 Pear Blossom Drive in Edison. And what they do is they bring professionals from all around the state and they run different businesses with students, not only from our city, but from cities around the state. And this one will be the Nicholas LaCourt Peterstown School Number 3 will be there. They also have a mayor and a city council. And my role is to swear in the young person who's going to be the mayor for the day. This is a standards-based 21st century exper experiential learning curriculum designed for 5th and 6th grade students to learn the importance of work, readiness, entrepreneurship, and financial literacy. And later that evening at 6 o'clock, I'm going to join the Boys and Girls Club of Union County. The 2017 Youth of the Year Award will be presented. And this award ceremony is located at the Gallopin Hill Caterers, 1085 Gallopin Hill Road in Union. And at 7 o'clock that evening, I'm going to attend a prayer service at the New Beginnings Ministry, located at 455 North Broad Street. And on Saturday, April 1st, around 2 o'clock, a competition for men that cook. It will be hosted by Missionaries on a Mission. It will be held at New Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, located at 866 East Jersey Street. So if you know of any men who think they can cook, they should show up here, bring their materials, and cook for the people that come. If you need more information on these events or any other events, please call our public information office at 908-820-4124. Please stay with us after these messages where we're going to talk about National Health Week and what we're doing here in the city of Elizabeth. Sometimes you learn by helping others learn. Kane University. Welcome back to our city, where I'm pleased to be joined by Miss Andrea Topping. Welcome, Andrea. Thank you. Thank She's you a member of our health department, and Miss Cheryl Abdur Rahman, who is also a public health educator. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, Cheryl, since you've never been here before, and Andrea has been on the show, we'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. And uh, what made you come here today? Well, as the mayor mentioned, my name is Cheryl Abdurrahman. Um, I've been working in the Department of Health and Human Service for a little over a year. Um, in December, I received my master's degree in public health. Um, I'm also the public health educator for the city. Um, I resided in Elizabeth for 30 years, and this coming May will be 30 years that I've been married, and I have four children. 30 years in Elizabeth and 30 years married. Yes. How about that? And you never had a fight. I wouldn't say never. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the role as a public educator in your master's, uh, does the theory in the master's degree actually work with what's going on in real life in, it, in public uh, health? So far, yes. Now I'm able to put everything that I've learned to put it in action. So oh. now I'm physically doing the work. Well, glad to have you do that. So, Thank you. Yes. Thank and Andrea, you. you've been on the show before, but tell us a little about yourself. Well, I'm the public health educator here for the city of Elizabeth as well. And um, I'm not quite 30 years, but I've been here um, in Elizabeth for about a good 25 years. I uh, graduated and then I went to South Carolina to go to Benedict College and I got my master's degree, no, I'm sorry, my bachelor's degree in public health. So. I haven't been here that long, as long as Cheryl, but <laughs> I've been here long you enough. You two seem to play off each other pretty well. We have to. We're yep. a team. Teamwork team team. makes the dream work. So what is Public Health Week? Well, Public Health Week um, is an initiative that the American Public Health um, Association came up with. It's kind of like... Um, we, they raise awareness across uh, for of public health across the United States of America. So, um, raise awareness for prevention, um, diseases, kind of uh, health 
like like a healthier lifestyle for the mm. community around the United States. So it's kind of every state come together for that first week in April of every year to kind of get together to raise awareness for health. And what are we doing here in the city of Elizabeth celebrating Public Health Week? Well, we have breast exams, we have STD, HIV exams, um, testing, we're gonna have blood pressure screenings, we have pediatric immunization and lead screenings. Um, we're going, that's going to be done by the public health nurses and proceed. That's going to be down at uh, the Peterstown Community Center on 418 Palmer Street. What exams are going to be there? All of these exams? Yes, all of these exams are going to be there. The breast, uh, public um, blood pressure. So When you say a breast exam, can there actually be mammograms? Or it's just, no? No. No, this is just an exam just by the exam. doctor? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. yes, it's just an exam by the doctor. Um, we're also going to have the senior mall walk the seniors like to engage in walking around the mall so they love that activity every year that we have it so they're going to come out and walk um the mall with us so if anyone likes to come out and walk the mall they can do so um the bridging the gap basketball game where we're going to have the office on youth staff versus the elected officials so that you won't see me out there. <laughs> I'm not running up and down no basketball court why are you, are you playing are you playing Cheryl? no i'm not playing no no i'm if you play, I'll play. Oh, Is yeah, basketball your thing? No, yeah. no, I, no. I, I like to watch it, like the oh, okay. March Madness. <laughs> Wait, you don't like to participate? No, I can't play basketball. I, I couldn't run up and down the court before it passed out. You might then, surprise then, yourself. And public health would really kick in <laughs> because you'd have to be giving me, uh, what do you call the it? CPR. CPR. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll have the nurses there, so. I know. Yeah. You'll be so. fine. I'm yeah. not so sure that's going to work out for me. <laughs> I'll go there and throw up the first ball to start the festival. Okay. Yeah, that, that'd that. be cool. They'd that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we also have the women's wellness workshop and brunch. That's we have that every year as well. That's going to be at the YMCA, 135 Madison Avenue. And our biggest event that we have during Public Health Week is the uh, Autism Awareness Walk, where because and also in April is Autism um, Awareness Month. So we kick off autism. Well, we kick off National Public Health Week with the Autism Walk, and we have. Um, we partner with the Elizabeth Parent Support Group with that event, so it's a really big event, and a lot of people. Tell us about the walk. Where does it go from the? Well, it's going to start at the um, Veterans Memorial Waterfront Park. Um, so we're going to start. Actually, we're going to start there, and then we're going to walk to the baseball. I'm sorry, the soccer field, and then at the end of the walk, because we walk pass down the the waterfront so we're going to walk past the water and then at the end we usually do the balloon release which is very pretty um and we after that this year we added a, a something new which is going to be play streets so we're going to have play streets outside with the ymca and shaping elizabeth they're going to come out and have balls and bikes for the kids and games for the kids to play so Anjaya, when you talk about these uh, programs, especially the walk, mm -hmm. you mentioned obesity mm -hmm. early on as well. Do we focus on that area too with other walks throughout the year? Yes, uh, we focus on, um, we have a breast cancer walk throughout the year, we have prostate cancer walk throughout the year. Those are our major walks that we usually uh, have throughout the year. And um, we're uh, slowly but surely creating new events and new walks for. Which has been, yeah. which you came to last year. Which one was that? The, at the YMCA, Spinning I for did. Breast Cancer. Yeah. So that's one of the new initiatives that we had. Now, Spinning for Breast Cancer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell us about spinning. Well, spinning, uh, spinning is good. I've never done this. It's <laughs> so good. It's so good. You it's, do this? I do this. I teach. You teach spinning class. I teach spinning um, downtown on 1st Street at the Miller Logan Center, 161. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I, I know. From 7. But the audience... They might 161 what then? <laughs> First Street. There you go, okay. In Elizabeth. Um, it's a great cardio, you know, and everybody needs cardio, but women is especially important for women. So it's a great cardio. Um, it reduces your blood pressure. So what are you doing spinning? We're riding the bike, but we're going at different pace. So it depends on what kind of ride. So we may do a seated ride, which is... You just ride sitting down and it's just like riding on the streets and you're just sitting down. Then we may speed it up, stand up and you're running. So it's like different terrains, but you're doing it with the bike, with a stationary bike. And so you're actually working out while you're spinning, spinning you're riding right. the bike in place. 
So do you do this or you just tell people what to no, do? No, I do this. You I, do it. I, I she do loves it. it. I love it. It's yes. my passion. This is what I do. <laughs> and I try to invite as many people as I can to join us. Well, I saw Director Garlic on that spinning bicycle last yes, time. She's good. She loves it as well. Mm -hmm. She does it a lot too. Yes, she loves it as well. Okay. So it reduces your stress, you know? Well, I, well, I don't have any stress. Mm, you're, <laughs> good. <laughs> you're good. You're good. So you, you mentioned the basketball game. Is this the bridging the gap basketball yes, game? Yes, bridging the gap and basketball game. And uh, who, 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 when you say elected officials and city hall personnel, who actually participates? So um, so far we have the Office of Staff. The whole staff is going to uh, play against. We have Councilman Manning, uh, Manning Grover. I have Councilman uh, Gallman and Councilwoman Patricia Perkins are on board so far. So we're, we're trying to get the word out there. You're going to gonna need a lot of nurses <laughs> to take care of those, those two people who are playing basketball. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they agreed to play. So we're, we're looking forward to it. It's for the kids. It's for the kids. I know who it's for. Yeah. I just, <laughs> you know, these people got to the go adults, to meetings. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's it kind of not fair. I mean, on the, on the, on the staff. Uh, what do you mean? Because we, we have got the Donald young Johnson who used to play with the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, I don't think he's playing though. He may. I'm not sure. No. He may be coaching because I know Freeholder Granados is coaching. Yeah, well, he can't run either. No, he. <laughs> he's got yeah. to be able to you yeah. know, be on the sideline somewhere. Yeah. And and so it's one game. Yes, it's one game for that one night. So yep. And uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned the caregivers workshop. Yes, the caregivers workshop. What is that? Go ahead. Caregivers Workshop, um, that's something that I'm a part of. Of course, I start Public Health Week the first day, Monday. And um, the Caregiver Workshop is informational and services um, given to caregivers so that they can learn techniques on how to release stress. So that's, and I have different vendors coming in. Um, I have um, Innovation Metaspa, and they're gonna perform chair massages, um, sound therapy, aromatherapy. Um, we're going to do haircuts and pedicures. So that just to let the caregivers know that we're here. You know, we hear and we see. And um, we're just here to help. So let me ask you, you've mentioned stress a couple of times on the show. Liz. Yes. In your education, on pub, does alcohol help relieve stress? No, no, it doesn't. Not at all? No. Not at all. So it actually increases the stress. It mm -hmm. increases the stress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So alcohol is something, if you're stressed, you should probably refrain from. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. The best way is to, um, to get physical. Yeah. To, in order to reduce your stress. Or not so much physical, but maybe relaxation. Yeah, I was um, going to say meditation. Meditation, mm -hmm. yoga, you know, breathing. walking, breathing techniques. Mm -hmm. So where are these workshops being held? Well, the first workshop is done at Peterstown, the community center, 418 Palmer Street, and that's on Monday, and it's from 11 to 3. So we start off Public Health Week with the caregivers workshop. Mm -hmm. How many people do you think come to this? I'm hoping to get as many people as I can. Good answer. <laughs> yeah, why give us, yeah. <laughs> It's like, uh, you know, what time did you get in last night? <laughs> I get in late. I'm not going to say what time. Uh, can you ladies stay with us? We're going to take a little break and then come back and talk more about National Public Health sure. Week okay. and what we're doing here in the city of Elizabeth. Please stay with us after these messages back more talking about National Health Week in the city of Elizabeth. We're an American original, dependable, historic, nuanced, with all the comforts of home, even when you're just visiting. So we're celebrating for all that we've left untouched and all that we've changed place where the past meets the future. So consider this your invitation. We've been celebrating here in Elizabeth for 350 years, and we're just getting started. Welcome back to our city where I'm pleased to be joined by Cheryl and Andrea, public health educators in the city of Elizabeth, talking about National Public Health Week here in our city. And one of the things we were talking about were the events uh, before the break so do residents have to register for these events? Are they open to anybody? Just show up? 
What's no, the deal there, Cheryl? No, they have to, everyone, it's open to everyone. Yes, they do have to register, and they can register by calling me at 908-820-4246. Or they can call me at 908-820-4050. And, and you register them and it's free? It's free, it's free. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So there's no walk-ins, in other words. We try to avoid that. I mean, if they walk in, we welcome them. Yeah. You know, we, we would like for them to register just so that we can get a count, you know, because we will have food, but they can walk in. That's fine. So do we collaborate with other agencies or do we do this ourselves? I would imagine we work with some other nonprofits in the neighborhood. Yes, we actually work with um, Trinitas. We partnered up with Trinitas Regional Medical Center. We partnered up with the YMC, the Gateway Family YMCA, the Elizabeth Branch, and Proceed, um, just to name a few of the sponsors for this event. Mm -hmm. And they help get people there as well? Yes, yes. they help mm -hmm. get people there as well. So Some of their clients? Yep, everything. yes. Mm -hmm. So um, if people want information or additional information, they said to call you. Yes. Is mm -hmm. there a calendar posted on our website, though? Is yes. The public health uh, schedule is actually posted on the Elizabeth website. So. Okay. So let's switch gears a little bit. Public health nurses. Yes. Uh, do you work with the public health nurses? And, Cheryl you know, I do. Cheryl? Yes. yes. And well, Andrea mentioned before about testing for STDs, HIV. Uh, is, is this all confidential? Yes, absolutely. And Absolutely. how does that work? I mean, they come in. They come uh, I in. I think most people might be a little afraid that it's not confidential. So explain how the confidentiality is protected of, of those. Well, folks. they have to sign a form. And um, basically it goes over the confidentiality that is between them, the nurses, you know, medical personnel. That's it. So, and when they come in, like for STD screenings, um, they're assigned a number. So it's not actually a name. Like the nurses have that information, but like to call in, they just give the number. So that kind of reassures the patients that it's confidential and they're pretty okay. So if the that. testing came back positive, somebody's not gonna be on the phone saying, hey, Mr. Jones, you tested positive. They're gonna say, no. hey, number nine. No, they, um, they have a time frame when to call back. It's usually a week. Um, on Wednesdays and they call and then once they give their number the nurses will then explain because first they have to confirm you know to make sure the number matches the name and their birth date right. and then they will go into details and then if they need to see them then they will have them come in but most times they can give the information over the phone like they make sure that they're the person that's receiving the information and not no one else and and how, the public health, health nurses how many how many do we have by the way we have five public health nurses, and then we have a supervisor and assistant supervisor. And where are they located? 418 Palmer Street. So they, they work out of that office? Yes. Mm -hmm. and they also go to our schools, right? Yes. Do yes. you two go to the schools for any purpose? No. 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 Just the nurses. Just the Just nurses. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's no public uh, health education? that's necessary in the schools or oh there are necessary yeah. but we just haven't re been reaching the schools yet mm -hmm. but we are working on that is there a component that you know of in the schools that teach public health or is, or is it just no I, not really? I do um, not know no. uh, just from experience um, when I got to college public health wasn't my um, first major wasn't my first choice it was actually social work so you know when I I told, social work just wasn't my thing. I didn't like it. So I went to my advisor and I said, listen, this is just not working for me. And she asked me, what do you like? I said, well, I like science. So, you know, so she said, well, maybe public health will be something that you may enjoy. So I went to a couple of classes and I said, you know, I really like this. And then as I got into it, I realized, I said, well, they should have had this into, into the high schools. So that way, you know, some high school students can see, oh, this is kind of cool, public health. You know, I, I like hands-on activities I like mm -hmm. to help people I like to educate people about um, different diseases mm -hmm. and, and how to lower your blood pressure or, or help a senior you know in any kind of way that they can so I think that this should be implemented in the school system and the public health issues that people get afraid of like Zika yes. meningitis yes uh, what's the proper protocol if a student is diagnosed with meningitis in the city well, I do know that they would have to call the health department. Mm -hmm. So we have to be notified, right? Yes, yes. we have to be, have notified. To be notified. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the health officer and the public health nurses kind of take care of that mm -hmm. part. Of it. And then, and then there would be some type of 
finding out who else that person yes. is. Yes, right. yes, they will do, and they have, we have investigators, mm -hmm. so they will go out and kind of investigate the situation. So the Zika virus was something last summer that everyone was up in yeah. arms about, mm -hmm. about people who may have traveled here mm -hmm. from highly infected areas. Right. We did a whole brochure on it, if you remember. Right, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, the education process during the summer mm -hmm. is important. Yes, uh, yes. How is it received, do you think, uh, when, when you or you go out and say, listen, or talk with people mm -hmm. about the issues of public health? Um, well, working in the nursing department, we get a lot of phone calls. So in the beginning, everybody was, you know, they were nervous. So we had a lot of questions, a lot of people calling, you know, um, they just traveled out of the country, you know, they stayed X amount of time and they wanted to know, like, what are the symptoms or, you know, what should they look for, things like that. So the nurses were handling a, a lot of questions like that. And it's just I think because everybody they were nervous um, so but the nurses were able to answer the questions and if not refer them you know um, information the packets that you gave out the information and when they would come into the center we would give them the information so you mentioned blood pressure cholesterol uh, checkups immunization are these issues provided free for the residents in the yes. City? yes yes as long as you have an, uh, an ID you can receive free services. And what, what services. other, besides, and you have STDs and HIV, what else do, and breast cancer exams? Mm -hmm. well, not they, mammograms, though, just. Not mammograms. Not okay. mammograms. They do um, flu shots, and they do anemia, anemia screamings occasionally. Okay. Mm -hmm. But those are like the main ones, the immunization, flu shots, STDs. And on the, on the breast cancer screenings, do they teach the women uh, to examine themselves as well yes. as part yes. of that process? Yes. Mm -hmm. So when they leave there, there's some sense of, Hey, yes. I can ho go home and do this? Yes. yes. And okay. they also give um, the females uh, little cards that mm -hmm. show you how to do a self-breast exam. So where do residents go to receive most of these services? Once again, Peterstown <laughs> Community so Center. So we don't have it anywhere else. It's the nope. Peterstown no, Community Center. No, it's the Peterstown. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is it an appointment needed, or who can they call for this? Well, um, for the adult clinic, like for immunization, there is um, an appointment. So they have to call, make an appointment. Um, if... Um, a patient come in and they have insurance or call and say they have insurance, we advise them to um, check with their insurance company first to see if they cover. If they don't cover, then of course they can come to our facility. But if they do cover, then they either have to go back to their primary care physician and let them tell them where, you know, places they could go to get the shots. So let me ask this question. How many or what citizens request the most? What is the public health issue that dominates the calls or the questions to all of you the most? What's the number one um, public health issue? For me, um, immunization yes. for their children. Yes. Because what happens is like usually around July, like the nurses start sending out forms, like telling them like you need to have your children, you know, immunized by September. But unfortunately, they let the whole summer go by, and September, October, no, like it's really busy. Because are they allowed in school? If they're, they're, not, they're not allowed. They're no. not allowed. So now uh, parents are panicky because their children are not allowed in school. So we are inundated with a lot of phone calls when their children are immunized. What are the immunizations that children need to get to school? Um, they need uh, M -M MMR, right. mm -hmm. and they need Hep B, um, Tdap. And chicken pox? Chicken pox. Polio still given? Polio. Mm -hmm. That's, e even though it's been eradicated in this country? I think it's all in the all together. They get the shots like all together, like it's one dose or something yeah. like that. Okay. Yes. So, uh, 18 and older, uh, these other services, not the immunization, but the 18 and older, it's free to all residents? Yes, it's free to all residents of Elizabeth. Um, I believe if they're under 18, they have to have a parent with right. them? Right, so it's from two months to 18 years. No. They need um, adult, right. they need parents. And then 18 and older, that's the adult clinic. So 18 and older, they need to make an appointment. 18 and under to two months, no appointment is needed. But they need to be with a parent. Yeah. Right, they need to be with a parent. One of the things we didn't talk about were preventive checkups and monitoring your health overall wellness. Yes. You ladies give advice. You talk about public health and education. Uh, now it's incumbent upon that person to follow up. It's probably where, where people slack off too, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Tell us about those efforts to get people 
to follow up or do preventive checkups? Uh, I always say early detection is key. Mm -hmm. Early detection, early detection. Um, it's it's it'll prevent you from the, the, the disease from spreading. Um, it, it if you go to the doctor and get a, a, a screening, it can practically save your life. It'll stop the problem before it starts. Right. So if you do get a checkup, um, I advise you to call your doctor, get a follow up just to you know see if everything is okay if not you know you will never know so it's it's very important i always say know your body yeah it's very important to know your body when you know your body and when something is off you know like okay let me go check this yeah. out it could be something major or not but when you know your body you know when something is off a lot of so, a lot of times people will uh ignore a headache Oh, I just have a slight headache, but you never know that headache can be a sign of a stroke, you know, or oh, I'm just having a little chest pain. That chest pain can be a sign of a heart attack. So it's very important to go to the doctor and get that checked out. Right. I have a personal mm -hmm. story. Um, I used to be a runner. So when I'm talking about know your body. So I went out and I would run, but I will always get this pain in my right foot. But I kept on running. And I did that for a whole year. When I went to the doctor, I ruptured my posterior tendon. The doctor told me had I come when it first happened, yeah. they could have saved the tendon. So this is what we're talking about, preventive and know your body. You know, I should have went right away, not just keep running on it. So it's mm -hmm. very important. So can you still run again or no? I can run, yes. But now I, I run with caution. I don't run on the pavement anymore. It has to be on, what's the soft? Grass. Treadmill, grass. Yeah. grass. And that's what led me to spinning because I needed to find another outlet to working out. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So um, as we wrap up here, how can people call uh, besides the email address? Is there a general number in City Hall? Or give the email addresses how people can reach you on any follow-up that they might want to do on public health issues. Um, they can reach me at 908-820-4246 or Andrea, 908-820-4050. And we get back to them if they leave a message? Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ladies, I want to thank you for taking the time mm -hmm. to join us on the show. I really appreciate your knowledge and your insight on mm -hmm. National thank Public you. Health Week. Thank you for having And especially the events you. that we schedule here in our city. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. For Miss Andrea Topping and Miss Cheryl Abdurrahman, I'm Chris Bolwage. We'll see you next week on another edition of Our City. Why do we like it here? Let's just say the reasons are diverse. Kane University.